We should discuss in a bit more detail the difference between binary encoding and unary encoding of numbers and also the concept of strong NP completeness. In a previous video that gave a first example of a Turing machine, I already mentioned that it can matter how the input and output of a computation is encoded. And by matter, I mean that it can have an impact on the exact number of computational steps we have to make to find the desired answer to some question. For example, what is 8 plus 3? In particular, when it comes to the encoding of numbers, we have to be very careful. As mentioned in the video discussing the subset sum problem, the standard assumption is that numbers are encoded in binary. So for example, if I have the number 6, that would be encoded as the bit string 110. The important property here is that the length of the encoded bit string, so in this case 110, is only logarithmic in the size of the encoded number, in this case 6. In general, to encode a natural number s, we only need about log s many bits, or to be more precise, log s rounded up many bits, where the log is to the base 2. Okay, so that is the binary encoding we all know. But now assume for a moment that you don't know anything about computer science. And you are asked to encode a natural number in a bit string. So you are asked to come up with some kind of scheme to encode natural numbers. Maybe you would come up with a quite different system. And I think a fairly natural first attempt would be to use something called unary encoding. The idea here is that we just repeat the symbol 1 as many times as the number to be encoded is big. So if I have the number 6 again, for example, we would just write a string consisting of 6 consecutive 1s. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. We can then still use the symbol 0 to separate different numbers from each other. So for example, if I want to encode a pair of numbers like 2 and 4, I could first encode 2 by 1, 1, and then write a 0, and then uh, after that uh, have the number 4, so 1, 1, 1, 1. When using unary encoding of numbers, we notice that the length of the resulting string is equal to the size of the encoded number. So if we encode a number s, we need a string of length s, as opposed to log s in the binary case. Therefore, unary encoding is exponentially worse in terms of bit string length than binary encoding. We usually measure computational time relative to the input size. And because of this, using unary instead of binary encoding can lead to very different computational conclusions. Something taking exponential time with respect to the input size when binary encoding is used may only take polynomial time when unary encoding is used. Not because the computation is faster in absolute terms when we use unary encoding, but because the input string is longer. Consider the following example. Say we have a problem where we are given some number s and we have to do some computation. Let's say if the number is encoded in binary, we make 2 to the n many steps, where n is the length of the input. So if the number is s, the length of the input n is about log s. And that means we would do 2 to the log s many steps which is just equal to s. Now instead, if the number is encoded in unary, say we make n squared many steps, where n again is the size of the input. So n just equals s, so overall we make s squared many steps. Now of course we notice that when we encode in binary, we make s steps, and we, when the number is encoded in unary, we make s square steps, and s square is larger, is worse than doing s steps. However, when measured relative to the length of the input, which is what we typically do, n squared 
looks in fact much better than 2 to the n. 2 to the n means we have exponential running time and n square means we have polynomial running time. Again, this is only because in unary encoding we artificially make the input larger than it has to be. And that makes the running time look more favorable, even when it isn't in absolute terms. The subset sum problem from the previous video has an interesting property. It is NP-complete when the numbers in the input are encoded in binary, as usual. However, if you were to encode the numbers in unary instead, the problem can be solved in polynomial time using dynamic programming. I will not discuss the dynamic program here, but you can find a discussion of two very similar dynamic programs for the knapsack problem in two other videos later on. Algorithms which solve a problem in polynomial time, provided that the numbers in the input are encoded in unary, have a particular name. They're called pseudopolynomial time algorithms. Do all problems have some pseudopolynomial time algorithm that solves them? No, that's not the case. Uh, so here are a few examples of problems for which no pseudopolynomial time algorithm is known. The easiest example is maybe the halting problem because it's just undecidable. And I mean, it remains undecidable no matter how you encode the input. Then a slightly more interesting example is the problem satisfiability, which we've seen as NP-complete. Now, in satisfiability, the thing is that numbers actually play no critical role in the input. So it doesn't really matter how we encode numbers, the input doesn't contain numbers as such. And so for satisfiability, we also don't know any pseudopolynomial time algorithm. Maybe the most interesting example uh, out of the three I will give is the traveling salesperson problem. So the traveling salesperson problem does actually critically have numbers in the input, uh, namely the distances between different cities, but the problem remains NP-complete even when those numbers in the input are encoded in unary. And because it remains NP-complete, unless P equals NP, there will be no polynomial time algorithm, even in that case. So the traveling salesperson problem is not believed to have a pseudopolynomial time algorithm that solves it. And so there's a difference between different types of problems. For the traveling salesperson problem, we don't think there's a pseudopolynomial time algorithm, but for subset sum, we know that there is a pseudopolynomial time algorithm that solves the problem. And so it's interesting to distinguish those types of different problems from one another. And that gives rise to a new definition. And the definition is the following. A problem is strongly NP-complete if it is NP-complete, even if unary encoding is used. And so the traveling salesperson problem and satisfiability are strongly NP-complete problems, but subset sum is not. 